yes in this video we will be talking about duality property of the continuous time fourier transform okay this the summary of the talk would be like this first we will discuss about duality property we will see the proof of the duality property and we will see six examples and from that we will try to define what is analytic signal and we will end up the talk with the example for an analytic signal okay so let us start with the definition of the continuous time fourier transform for a signal x of t we define the fourier transform to be x of j omega equal to integral minus infinity to infinity x of t power minus j omega t and the corresponding inverse fourier transform is given by x of t equal to 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity x of j omega e power j omega t d omega so and these two functions x of t and x of j omega they are related in this fashion okay now let us directly jump into the definition of the duality property it says that if x of t has x of j omega as the fourier transform then by replacing omega with t and then taking the fourier transform it would be equal to 2 pi into x of minus omega that is if you look at this two relations little bit carefully we see that duality property is concerned with taking the fourier transform of the signal x of t twice okay so let us try to prove this property so we start with the definition of the fourier transform which is given by this now just for the sake of clarity we will replace the dummy variable omega with lambda so and hence we get x of j lambda would be equal to integral minus infinity to infinity x of t power minus j lambda t dt which is same as the definition of the definition of the fourier transform but the dummy variable is lambda instead of omega so we will soon understand why we have done this yes now what is the next step now we will try to take the fourier transform of this new function x of j lambda which is a complex function so let it be defined as f of j omega which is nothing but integral minus infinity to infinity x of j lambda e power minus j omega lambda d lambda now the next step e would be substitution of the equation 7 in equation 8 so what do we get by substituting we get this equation so and what is it we have done we have replaced our x of j lambda with this the term which is inside the square bracket by doing small arrangements we can easily rewrite this equation 9 in terms of as equation 10 so that is nothing but we have brought out x of t outside the square bracket and we, we have uh, arranged in such a way that the e power term will come inside the square bracket okay so but you can uh, from our class notes we can see that this integration inside the square bracket is nothing but the generalized function representation of the Dirac delta function here the integration variable is lambda and hence this integration finally would be equal to 2 pi into delta of omega plus t so by replacing the square term by this Dirac delta function we get f of j omega would be equal to 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity x of t delta of t plus omega again by the definition of Dirac delta function this would be equal to 2 pi into x of minus omega so this concludes the proof of duality property so in summary what is that we have seen so we have seen that if the Fourier transform of x of capital x of jt would be equal to 2 pi into x of minus omega so we will take few examples for this so the def the duality property is given here and we will take the first example to be finding the Fourier transform of the signal x of t equal to 1 plus jt okay so a small trick we have to use here which is nothing but knowing a function which has this as the Fourier transform so we will illustrate that in more detail as given below okay yes yeah, so if you look at the class notes you can easily see that we have proved that e power minus t u of t will have 
वन बाई वन प्लस जे ओमेगा एज द फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म लेट एस कॉल द सिग्नल टू बी एक्स वन ऑफ टी एंड द करस्पॉन्डिंग फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म टू बी एक्स वन ऑफ जे ओमेगा नो बाई रिप्लेसिंग ओमेगा विथ टी वी सी दैट एक्स वन ऑफ जे टी वुड बी वन बाई वन प्लस जे टी विच इज नथिंग बट अवर सिग्नल वन बाई नथिंग बट अवर सिग्नल एक्स ऑफ टी बाई यूजिंग डिटी प्रॉपर्टी वी गेट द फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म टू बी टू पाई टाइम्स एक्स वन ऑफ माइनस ओमेगा विच इज नथिंग बट टू पाई टाइम्स ई पावर ओमेगा यू ऑफ माइनस ओमेगा सो वॉट इज द फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म ऑफ वन बाई वन प्लस जे टी दैट वुड बी टू पाई ई पावर ओमेगा यू ऑफ माइनस ओमेगा is as a second example we take the evaluation of fourier transform of the signal 1 by 2 minus jt again we invoke the trick and what is that we have seen in the class that e power 2t u of minus t will have 1 by 2 minus j omega as the fourier transform as usual we call this signal to be x1 of t and the corresponding fourier transform to be x1 of j omega so clearly by using the duality property we see that x1 of jt which is nothing but 1 by 2 minus jt would be equal to x of t and its fourier transform is 2 pi x1 of minus omega which is given by this expression and we will take the third example which is x of t equal to 1 by 9 plus t square okay so again we see that e power minus 3 mod t will have 6 by 9 plus omega square as the fourier transform by doing some scaling we see that 1 by 6 times e power minus 3 mod t will have 1 by 9 plus omega square okay so after scaling again we call the signal to be x1 of t so that we don't lose the clarity okay yes so now by replacing omega with t we get and using duality property we get x1 of jt which is equal to 1 by 9 plus t square will have pi by 3 times e power minus mod omega as the fourier transform as a fourth example which is very important we take x of t to be 1 by pi t okay so we start with the signal signum of t which will have 2 by j omega as the fourier transform by doing some scaling which is nothing but multiplication of with j by 2 pi we get x1 of j omega to be 1 by pi omega again please note that even though we have done the scaling still we call that signal to be x1 of t so by replacing omega with t and using duality property we see that 1 by pi t will have 2 pi into x1 of minus omega which is nothing but minus j signum of omega as the fourier transform okay as an example 5 we take x of t to be 1 by 2 times delta of t minus j by pi t so again we start with the signal u of t which will have pi delta of omega plus 1 by j omega as the fourier transform by doing the scaling with 1 by 2 pi we see that the corresponding fourier transform is 1 by 2 times delta of omega minus j by pi omega now by using duality property we see that this signal will have u of minus omega as the fourier transform as a similar exam the extension for the previous example let us try to find the fourier transform of this signal 1 by 2 times delta of t plus j by pi t we can proceed by using the uh, fourier transform of u of minus t but it is a simple expression which is nothing but the time reversed version of the previous signal and hence by using the time reversal property we see that this signal will have u of omega as the fourier transform so next let's move on to the concept of what is called analytic signal so again we assume that x of t will have x of j omega as the fourier transform so if that is the case we define the analytic signal as x a of t which is nothing but the convolution of the signal x of t with the signal delta of t plus j by pi t so by using distributive property we see that this expression 
can be expanded in this format which is x of t convolved with delta of t plus j times x of t convolved with 1 by pi t but the convolution of any signal with 1 by pi t we represent it as x h of t which is nothing but the Hilbert transform of the signal x of t so by simplification we see that x a of t is nothing but x of t plus j times x h of t in frequency domain this can be written as x a of j omega which is equal to x of j omega plus j times x of j omega times minus j signum of omega so by simplification we see that this is nothing but 2 times x of j omega times u of omega so if you look at this equation little bit carefully we see that the Fourier transform of the analytic signal will have only positive frequencies of x of j omega so this is very important result and we will discuss about the concept of analytic signal and complex envelope in the next lecture but we will end up this video with an example for analytic signal so we take very simple example which is x of t equal to cos omega naught t whose Fourier transform is nothing but two Dirac delta functions at plus r minus omega with a strength of each with a strength of pi. Now the analytic signal for this will have again as usual two times x of j omega into u of omega as the Fourier transform so if you look at this equation clearly after multiplication only positive Dirac delta function is retained because of multiplication with u of omega now if you take the inverse Fourier transform we see that x a of t is nothing but e power j omega naught t so by expansion of this by using Euler's formula you see that e power j omega naught t is cos omega naught t plus j sin omega naught t and if you look at the equation for analytic signal the complex the imaginary part of that should be the Hilbert transform of the signal so thank you very much for your <laughs> time and we will discuss more about analytic signal and complex envelope in the next lecture thank you